This skating lesson is brought to you by Audible, where you can listen to audiobooks of your favorite titles, including Alone by Bill Jones, The Triumph and Tragedy of John Curry. Enter the code TSLVisionaries-20 at checkout for a free audiobook for new Audible members. Alone is also the January Book Club selection for the TSL Visionaries Book Club. To join this community, you can subscribe by selecting the Join button on YouTube. The Join button is to the left of where you hit subscribe beneath the YouTube video. If you would prefer to join the community on Facebook, please click the link in the description box below. Hello and welcome to The Skating Lesson. I'm Dave Lees. And I'm Jonathan Beyer. And everybody, I'm just sitting on the other side of my table because I'm taking down all my Christmas stuff. Everything That's okay. Up. My uh, painting behind me is all crooked. There's stuff going on, construction stuff going up and down. So it's fine. Things are moving. I don't care. Happy New Year, Dave. <laughs> this is this and that. We are going to be discussing everything going on in the skating world uh, this week. If you're new here, please subscribe below. Smash that like button. Welcome to 2024. Our first This and That of 2024. I feel like I haven't seen you in weeks. I'm just getting over the flu. How are you? As was I. It made for like a pretty rough holiday season, right? Yeah. Like I was a little bit sick before the holiday. And then I think you and I had something very similar, this kind of like stomachy thing that was going on. And man, does it zap you. Mine, I didn't have the stomach as much, but I had a ton of fatigue. I, and I don't know, my nephew was sick on Christmas and the day after when we went ice skating. I took my nephew's ice skating. Which I saw the clips. It was adorable. I'm not ready for that with my nieces yet. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was stressful because okay. their friends were there. So they like, uh, and I was originally only supposed to take one of them ice skating. One of them was going to watch. They Their friends were there. They both decided there was not a lot of listening. And I was like, and they had this friend who had no idea what he was doing. And he had one of those mothers that's like, these are the kids that like, it'll be December and they're running around barefoot outside. And the mother's like, so happy and just like, hey, how are you doing? Right? The kid was falling every three feet and like, not just falling, but knocking other people over and then bouncing. And oh, I was yeah, kind of destructive falling, yeah. I mean, he was, he's a sweet kid, he's very funny, but I could not ice skate, right? And I was like <laughs> trying to give them tips and uh, yeah, no, I was like, bend forward, arms in front. Like, I'm just thinking like, oh my goodness, like my sister scares me, right? So I'm thinking like, if they hit their heads, like I, ca I can't, you know? And my dad <laughs> was originally gonna skate with me and he was like, no, I'm just gonna stay here. And I was like, <laughs> so anyway, it was uh, loads of family people I'd had by all, but it was a okay. good time, they wanted to okay. go again. So, but it was, uh, yeah. Oh man. Try Especially one more time. Yeah. Okay. Public session. And my sister, like, I wanted to go to the rink near me. And my sister's like, no, I think the mall is easier. And I'm like, the mall rat kids, this is what we need ice skating around my right. neck. Oh, so yeah. Sensory overload. That would be too much for me. Yeah. I, think I don't you know how in the video. Ever trained in that mall in Portland. Seems so yeah, difficult yeah. to train in a mall. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, it was it was quite the experience, but we had fun. So anyway, um, yeah, but yeah, I completely got zapped. So, oh yeah, oh man, the, you the made it through. You made it through Japanese and Russian nationals. Just yeah. in time for this news to hit. Yes, which I knew was coming, but not when. So, and I just wanted to say about that because I think a lot of people were saying that. Just so everyone knows, we're talking about Nikolai, Nikolai Sorensen in the article. So I had heard, I had heard something was brewing in October and then in early November. Well, we kind of mentioned it, and then obviously more definitively, right? And I, I thought that that was interesting because I think a lot of people are saying, why, you know, why is it posted right before Canadian Nationals? Well, the truth is, is that it could have been posted right before the Grand Prix final, or it could have been posted right right before one of their Grand Prix. Um, my understanding, and then I was, you know, I said, Christine, do you have an article coming out? And she's like, well, we have some football things. And then like, so there's a lot when these stories come out that one, you have like USA Today's scheduling and what they deem important and what other stories people have going on. But my understanding, and, you know, I'm supposed to catch up with Christine over the next couple of days at some point, um, is that, you know, journalism and sources and things coming through. And this is particularly complicated because no one that's party to an investigation with the OSIC is allowed to talk. So if you read Christine's, read it very carefully, and you'll notice that she didn't get a direct quote 
from either party. So they, someone had to, there's obviously, a, you know, when you file something with Safe Sport or the OSIC, there's a report. And they said in this case, there was a report um, that Nikolai Sorensen is um, accused of sexual assault that was violent in nature and uh, sounded like rape from uh, what uh, the article said. It is, um, you know, it takes a while and that report would have had to have gotten to Christine's hands. So, and, you know, there's a lawyer in there that's been in other Christine articles before, you know, I don't know, you know, she has sources everywhere, right? With um, different things like that. So yeah, I, I don't know. They said that it was filed in July. So. And obviously if this was filed and we caught wind of it in October, I would assume- Yeah, you know, we, caught, we caught wind of it from someone that was involved in a different investigation or, and someone that had reported and these people support each other and ask each other different things. So. You know, that's how we got. But it meant also, I would assume that Nikolai and his team were aware that this was coming as early as July. I believe they found it in October, like maybe shortly before they bombed those twizzles at Finlandia. Like that. Um, that was sort of what the article indicated or mm -hmm. there was some tie into Finlandia with that. Um, and I would imagine very tricky for them also knowing it's coming you know it's coming, how does one, yeah. I don't know, and obviously very difficult for her. Yeah, from what I've been told, the report is quite detailed with people who have obviously um, found out about it over the last 11 years. Um, and that the, um, I never to say, the victim or the alleged victim, right? Like, I'm just gonna say the victim uh, was going to file in the state, but the statute of limitations had just told. Uh, so, and I think, I think there's, there's a lot of ethical questions about, you know, should these organizations take care of something that, um, you know, the legal system isn't, right? And, and then, I think we see, you know, how they're basically quasi legal entities, right? Safe sport. Um, this OSIC. And unfortunately, we do see a lot of these investigations do get overturned for people that have enough money, right? Or mm -hmm. that these sentences get reduced. Um, and I, I think- And the maximum punishment that these kinds of organizations can can give is what? Suspension from the sport itself. Suspension from the sport itself. With As someone like- Formal legal- Listen, I don't, I don't know about Nikolai Sorensen, about if he's gone to college or what his plans are, or if he wanted to coach or whatnot. But in this case, the article said that uh, the reporter, the, the person who reported uh, Nikolai uh, was concerned about coaching. Um, and that was their number one um, concern for this. Uh, you know, far beyond, it's not about skating. It's about, you know, coaching and, be, and being around children. So um, I thought that that was, uh, you know, an interesting note in the article. Um, and, you know, we'll have to see, you know, I don't think that we have a lot of experience with how the Canadian, uh, you know, OSIC, or I want to say Canadian safe sport, but, you know, how they work and how long these cases take. But, you know, people have been saying, you know, should they even be able to report on it if there's no, first of all, if there is an investigation going on, I would want to know about it. I'm just going to tell you, and this is not about Nikolai in particular, right? It, it, anyone. If you're a Skate Canada athlete, you're traveling together. You're socializing together, right? Would you want to know if someone was accused of choking and raping someone? Yes, I would I would want to know. And I would be, if if I were put in that situation, yeah, I, I, I think to protect athletes, yeah, I would want to know that. You know, I, I I would have a real issue. I mean, think about if you're like, and then now think about if you're a junior lady at Canadian Nationals, a novice, I don't know, right? Competing, you're in the hotel, you're in the arena. What if you're like stuck in an elevator? Like this could all be very uh, uh, intimidating, uh, anxiety producing, triggering. Well, or if you're the parent of a young ice dancer that wants to ask him for some lessons. Mm. Yeah. I don't know if he is currently coaching, but I, I think, think about if you are a, think about if you're a skater, you know, statistically, other competitors at 
um, Canadian nationals will have been sexually assaulted. Just, I mean, and that's true at any competition, right? That's just the way, unfortunately, the world is. So, yeah, I think that people do need to know that. You're right. Um, there are also different um, things that they can do. And the OSIC, and, and Safe Sport had this as well, um, there's something called interim measures, right? Which which are protections that are put in place um, to protect uh, the victim, the accused, the organization as a whole, uh, as the investigation is ongoing. And there were restrictions that were put in place prior to the Grand Prix final. Now, mm. with everything in these organizations, of course, these are really gray areas. There's something called unnecessary socializing. So... And this is interesting because, you know, they're allowed. You're allowed to eat a meal with another athlete, right? But you're not. You're not supposed to hang out. You know, outside if someone is. You know, the accused is not supposed to socialize with people unnecessarily, which then gets into such a gray area because, of course, there are pictures of Nikolai with athletes at the Grand Prix final outside of a meal setting. Then you get into. Is that necessary, unnecessary? Who's policing that? Who's saying what's necessary? I mean, it's a really a murky field. And, and I think, unfortunately, not having a lot of familiarity with the OSOC, but knowing with Safe Sport, the volume of cases is astronomical. Um, these are not extremely funded organizations. You could go into whether that's by design. Is it a smokescreen? Are they just merely overwhelmed and out of their depth in certain respects? And then you have to think about with these organizations, like why do certain investigations take so long? Delilah, I was just going to bring up. I feel they're all very slow moving organizations. They are, um, but they have yeah. so many, right? So you have to think about the Morgan Cipras case, right? There was a photograph. There was, some, you know, I don't think he really fought it. That was pretty easy, right? Like for these organizations, relatively compared to something like Delilah, where there are what do they say that there were 10 accusers uh, in that case that started in August, 2020 Delilah doesn't even look the same compared to what she looked like back then. Right. She's still coaching. Um, you know, she had to have uh, another adult supervision, right. Who could be her adopted son based on these rules. I mean, you think about the loopholes in these situations that even for the very best of intentions, I imagine um, you know, you go to a top law school, you probably want to work at, you know, a very prestigious law firm. Safe Sport's probably not your first choice. There's probably high turnover at Safe Sport. I'm sure every time that there's turnover, that causes more delays in an investigation. You can see that this is not, I mean, ostensibly he could compete at the Olympics before the investigation is concluded. Well, because, you know, I was seeing some, <clears throat> some backlash on social media and things like this. How can he compete? Mm -hmm. Canadian nationals, but of course we do get into gray area because he mm -hmm. was not necessarily found guilty. It's an investigation still technically at this moment, correct? Yeah, but then, you know, it's so funny how, yes, you get into all sorts of legal questions, right? But I, there's, uh, Skating Scores had posted something about um, a speed skater and the ISU. The and German this, speed skater, was that right? Yeah, and that okay. book claims that the ISU had requested that um, said skater withdraw, right, from the competition. And, you know, we won't say anything. I'm surprised in, in certain respects that there has not been, like, we know that he has a bad knee, uh, surprised that they didn't pull out cold and flu, whatnot, right? But, but I'm, listen, I'm horrified by the details that were included in that article. But I have to say, I personally... And really disappointed in um, the International Academy of Montreal and the Skate Canada. And I'm going to go into each organization and why. Okay. Skate Canada, if you notice, the only Canadian athlete who even liked uh, a post by Ashley Wagner. Ashley Wagner was uh, supporting uh, the victim in question and trying to shed some light and, and clarity on these things. And people get very upset. They love their skating. They feel like they have an investment. And people often react horribly. I mean, I was looking at the Facebook comments and the first comment was, well, how can he defend himself? And you're like, wait a second. Maybe maybe that shouldn't be the first comment. That, right. that's, that's a, that is a viable 
um, legitimate comment, but maybe that shouldn't be the first one. And mm. maybe with some self-awareness, you wouldn't want your name on that comment. Because like, what if it were your sister or your mother or friend or so on and so forth, right? But some of the fans have a propensity for leaving certain comments. Um, but looking at it, you know, no Canadian athlete has said anything. There is speculation that Skate Canada has advised people not to say anything. Now, some people could use the excuse that there's an ongoing investigation, but to even like a post or to show support or something like Piper did, it, a like isn't much. We're not saying that anyone has to, but to me, the absence of anyone liking anything is troubling. And, you know, there is a culture of silence in these sports that has been discussed before. And, you know, a culture of silence does breed more abuse. Right. When, and you have to think about it. I think of, so I was thinking about Olympic champions in this sport, right? There is a real culture in skating of looking the other way. And I was thinking about almost every single Olympic champion, especially in pairs or dance and knowing what has happened in different schools that they grew up in on their way to the Olympic podium. And I was thinking about how many things certain skaters have to overlook to get to the top. Right. Mm -hmm. But then if you think about it, when you overlook something and then you come awake to something, then you start to think, oh my goodness, what didn't I report? Oh my goodness, what did I allow to happen, right? And then it's almost like people in skating, not only are they just trying to do the right thing for their careers, then they almost feel like the stain is on them, right? And then you could think about how, you know, they're different safe sport investigations going on at the rink and what coach is defending what person because they're all so desperately afraid of losing their livelihoods, right? And it prevents people from doing the right thing. So it's a really murky uh, ethical situation. I mean, I'm just trying to think as an athlete with Skate Canada right now, I have to be honest, my instinct would probably also to be quiet merely because I don't know what's happening. How about Caitlin Weaver not saying anything when she is... Uh, I would say she's a self-proclaimed advocate, right? She's very into social justice. I mean, Caitlin Weaver posts that when she goes to visit her family in Texas, she's uh, donating to charities, right? For LGBT or, or or women or something along those lines. She hasn't said anything, but if you think about it, she well, what could- What would you say? I think you would say that you, you know, support um, the victim and that, you know, you think that there is, you know, that you are- Hopeful that there's an investigation that will take place and that it's very diligent and thorough and that Skate Canada has therapists on hand for the athletes and that they have, they take this seriously. Um, because you have to realize that this is not only affecting the team in question, the victim, their families, right? This now has becomes a mess for everyone who competes at Canadian Nationals. It could be highly triggering. We don't know everybody's personal backgrounds or what they have gone through in their lives. Well, I would think other victims that have not spoken out are watching very carefully. Yeah. And then yeah. what does it say if you want to report something in the future and you know that ostensibly they're going to allow someone to compete with that? I mean, I think it's quite serious and concerning, right? But, and then you think, okay, Skate Canada might not, you know, Skate Canada also may be wondering what they do legally, right? But I think that Unfortunately, uh, you know, the Canadian Olympic Committee, Skate Canada, this is why these organizations exist to shed leadership uh, at this point in time. And, and I, I don't believe that Skate Canada's statement was um, well-crafted. You know, having worked in community- What was their statement? It was very vague. It, called, it referred to it as an abuse issue, which, rape and sexual assault is not an abuse issue that's rape and sexual assault right um they also didn't refer to anything specifically and then you have to think that they could also be sly about social media because you know that if people are liking or commenting a post it'll be shown to more people that's how algorithms work so if right. you shut everyone up it makes it get smaller and i have to say i'm quite disgusted by some of the journalists who we know from canada where if you know, if this were meddling or if this were a case about Russian uh, doping. judging, right? Yeah. Doping or judging would be all over it, right? But those same people aren't reporting. And you have to wonder, there's, 
there's, um, you know, always the threat of access. I was talking to someone who runs a large skating forum and they were talking about how they'll interview certain athletes. And then the Japanese Skating Federation will ask them to take out quotes and say, well, I don't think they really meant that. Can you remove that? And they're like, well, that's what they said on the record on the tape recorder, which is why you have that. Right. And in right. real journalism, what you say on the record, you don't get to like massage that Take after yeah but figure skating and some of these smaller sports live in this world where it's not football right if a football player said something and it was printed it's printed you know right. and, and no one feels bad for them afterwards right a 22 year old skater a 24 year old skater a federation is able to kind of bully someone to remove that quote they all don't want scandal they want to protect something often they want to uh avoid controversy and when you remove that even if it's under the guise of protection there's always the threat that that person won't get credentials in the future so mm -hmm. and it prevents journalism and then at the end of the day when you wonder why the sports are smaller like they are well you know this it all kind of it's like a weird feedback oh, I remember they took away christine's credentials forever after that yeah. book yeah mm -hmm. They did it, it wound up being for a year, but she was, or yeah. no, sorry, it wasn't, it was for months. Uh, I think it was three months or something in the book. And they said, oh, I'll fill you in on what you missed. There's a joke okay. in her books about it, but okay, yeah. Um, but if you think about it, these kinds of things, it's very messy. And to see that other um, reporters didn't pick it up uh, as quickly, it's telling. It's yeah. telling. And it's, that is upsetting. On the other hand, Montreal has really been kind of the example and the um, they've really presented themselves as being above the fray, that they are about athlete empowerment, um, that they they support, you know, having both skaters be strong. There are some ice dance schools that really view women and um quite misogynistic ways that the girl just has to be pretty and thin and be able to emote. And it doesn't matter how she skates. Montreal hasn't been that right. They've been about two strong skaters. Now they at least had some warning that this was coming. They have not replied to any requests for comments uh, about this, which does make you call into question how legitimate all of that is. Right. I mean, I think if we look into the, the ice dance Academy of Montreal, they have quite a large um, charter of values on their website. Well, how real is all of that if you don't even say anything and then you continue to coach this athlete? And we don't know exactly when they uh, notified them, but I would imagine uh, they have had at least some warning. I know I texted Marie France about this on December 14th. So uh, it's certainly they weren't blindsided completely, right? So, um, I would say that it's interesting that they haven't said anything because the longer they are silent, the more time you start to wonder about the International Academy of Montreal. They're extremely powerful. They brag about how many countries they have, um, upwards of 20, you know, and, they're, and in any sort of situation, you start to wonder really about their history. I mean, they were, they started at the Sochi Olympics. They had Sada and Adria. Let's not forget that it wasn't until the next year that they became successful when Papadakis and Cizeron and Romain came and they teamed up essentially with the French Federation and Didier Gaillaga and they went from being in 10th place to in first place, okay? And Didier Gaillaga is an extremely uh, nefarious figure in figure skating, according to many people, right? There are documentaries about that. So then you get into stuff about Papadakis and what was in that documentary before the Olympics, right? And I think... You know, they have such a pristine reputation, but, you know, how much of that is PR? They do have a marketing agency attached to their school. So the fact that they haven't said anything one way or another, and are they going to show up at nationals, right? Are they going to allow their reputation to go in the mud off of one skater with horrible skating skills and a bad knee? But well, skating skills don't even matter. Do you know what I mean? It's it just being there. Well, of course they don't matter. Think about this team in itself. This team is an invention, okay? This team was Danish, okay? When they were Danish, nobody paid attention to them. They were down there with Eric's husband, the third ranked, you know, Spanish dancer. All of a sudden they switch to Canada and we start talking about, you know, they start getting higher marks. Everybody acts like they're so improved and whatnot. Well, what changed, Jonathan? Yeah. 
<clears throat> his skating well, didn't get better no. if you watch the video, right? But now they have the right federation behind them. And it, it tells you a lot about Ice Dance, that they have been on that rise. So it's uncomfortable. You know, there are uncomfortable truths in a subjective sport and in a very subjective discipline like Ice Dance. I don't know. It's just, it's... Yeah, but, I mean, my thoughts are turning to Laurence also. Absolutely. I cannot uh, imagine... She's in an impossible position, impossible. okay? Yeah. This is her career. This is also her significant other, right? Oh, I, oh, I did not realize that. They're a couple, right? Okay. So they're, right, this is her career, this is her significant other. If she stays with him, she will be labeled a rape apologist. If she doesn't, there goes her career. It's an impossible position for her. And you have yeah. to feel for her in that kind of a situation. And this happened before they were ever a team. That You know, this is... So and I think... Before they were in Montreal, obviously. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. He was hmm. training with Andrew Laverick at the time that that took place. Hmm. Now banned Andrew Laverick. Who still coaches, by the way. Saw him yesterday at the rink. Um, mm -hmm. So... Yes. It's it's a really murky, messy. Well, going to be, and I and I also think of the other athletes competing at Canadian Nationals. I mm -hmm. mean, everyone's been talking because it's been the thirtieth anniversary of the Nancy Tanya debacle, <laughs> and everyone still talks about who was competing there. What an overwhelming cloud it cast over the entire event. Nobody talking about this. Nobody talking about that. It con it consumed all of the oxygen there. And I would imagine as an athlete competing there, especially in dance, but in, in every discipline, it's around. I mean, mm -hmm. like you're saying, it seems it's not going to be a culture that anyone will bring it up in a press conference or in a mixed zone or anything like that. That, that maybe the strategy for them is to just pretend nothing's happening and just... Well, that's interesting too, because if they don't bring it up, at a press conference and they allowed them to compete, other people will start to weigh in on that and then people will really get upset. Yeah. You have to like really think about this from every perspective, but right? Will the journalists be there that will, will have the guts to sort of go there? Here's the thing, people worry about credentials so much. You don't need a credential to write about a skating event in a world right. where there's Twitter and 24 seven access. Right. Right. You you can watch everything being streamed this doesn't this event doesn't even have tv rights in canada right. think about that in the state yeah. of skating right there's a lot of um you know talk about the financials of both us figure skating and uh skate canada so you start to wonder what is going to happen there right think about well, next week. we always know they have such flowery commentary for nationals, mm -hmm. I would Canadians not, like to play above the fray. Right. Notice, has Skate Canada ever said anything about Valieva? Right. Think about how many people haven't, and the thought is is that everybody's afraid of upsetting the Russians. Mm. They've never pushed for that team gold in Sochi. Because isn't it Caitlin Weaver that does the commentary for dance in Canada? You know, that that has happened in the past. And, and if she is the commentator... Oh, that's, I, yeah, I'm trying to remember back. It would be Caitlin Weaver, but I wouldn't be surprised if they're swapped out and have Tracy Wilson. Yeah. Or if Tracy joins to kind of guide. Yeah. Right? Because that would be... Listen, Caitlin's a younger commentator, right? And then... I'm sorry, if Caitlin and Ted do it, people are going to bring up whatever the heck were those allegations at Ted's rink that did he or didn't he know about it you start to think about what people can start to dig into and mm -hmm. you know ted has that nice guy veneer but i'm pretty sure he propped up a terry for many years right and did he do that for his own advantage right people will start to come for you <laughs> right yeah. and well, it, they and did. It, remember he got off twitter for a while during all of that i think unfortunately if they do compete other people will start to be judged by their actions. Even though it's not their, they didn't cause it, they are not responsible for this situation. But if they allow this team to compete, that puts a lot of people in a very uncomfortable situation. I mean, Caitlin Weaver is also on the ISU technical committee, right? Yeah. You start to think this is a person with leadership positions. Are they- So if, if, you're, 
if you're the team in Montreal, if you're I am, what are you advising to pull out? I mean, Jonathan, they have so many teams they could make Marjorie and Zach <laughs> two places well, higher. beautifully this season. Yeah. Listen. I personally would not sit in the kiss and cry with him. I'll put it that way. Yeah. Right. We have 27 coaches. Uh, the synchro coach can go sit in the kiss and cry with him. Anything I'm not doing you that. do will be such a statement. Mm -hmm. If they withdraw, are they in fact withdrawing from the full season or are they looking for the buzz of this article to die down and then they would be sent to worlds anyway, which would be even a more home worlds. expensive. Yeah. Home Worlds is also going to bring it up because a home world, let's say they compete at the home worlds, then you have people from all over the world and these investigations are slow. It's probably unlikely to be done by then. Yeah. And let's, it's not like this team has two equally matched skaters. People talk about how strong Laurence is, they talk about how attractive Nikolai is. Right. Watch them on a side by side, there's a vast difference. Right. right? You know, I think Lila and Lewis don't have a lot to worry about in terms of this team catching them should they compete because you got to think, you know, judges don't like to be wrong, right? So if everybody is a little bit souring on a team, you know, Tanya had a lot of attention, but she didn't get a lot of great marks at the right. Lila Hummer Olympics. Right. She didn't skate that well. But again, perception is a lot in figure skating. It can, it can give you a, you know, a place or two one way or another. And um, listen, I think Marjorie and Zach have a, a great shot to move up at Canadian Nationals at this point. Because think about the distraction, right? Well, that's the thing. <clears throat> if indeed the mishap at Finlandia was involved. We don't know. Mm -hmm. It's very plausible that yep. it was due to distraction from their knowledge of the, that this was mm -hmm. coming. I would imagine the distraction at nationals would be very immense. Yeah. Um, you think about Laurence, how is Laurence gonna mentally get herself into this place to compete? Yeah. Knowing yeah. what's at stake for her and that there's really, it's a no win situation for her. And that you have Christine Brennan on you. Yeah. I'm sorry. Um, Christine Brennan wrote an article yesterday about the Mary Lou Retton situation. Okay. That story has been alive for a while. And I will and say that story, she was in the hospital. She didn't have insurance. So they you started remember that when I posted that I had heard this from a gymnastics coach that called me and said, Mary Lou is in a really bad situation. And wound up when i posted people didn't believe it they couldn't believe that mary lou retton didn't have insurance but then you look this is someone that had 30 surgeries right but then they were like oh she couldn't get insurance christine call or usa today called up an insurance broker to estimate how much the insurance cost would be in the article. i know i saw them printed it was like four or five six hundred bucks a month or something Listen, I think that if someone had 30 surgeries, there are a lot of other potential problems that can happen there. Mm. Think about how many pain pills you'd be prescribed if you had 30 surgeries, right? How many think, existing conditions, yeah. Think about how many how many trips to physical therapy you would have or what, I mean, it's just, there are so many potential, you know, complications and issues there. I don't think Christine did anything inaccurate with the Mary Lou Retton article. Because I think a lot of people have a lot of questions. And it's interesting, you know, when GoFundMe started, everybody was like, yes, donate money, right? But think about how that's changed where now people want an accounting. Think about when Todd Sand had to, um, you know, they had the GoFundMe for Todd, right? At the end of the last season, Todd has not returned to coaching yet. So in a two income family, that's one income now that they're right. down and they have kids that are college age. And a huge increase in expenses, yeah. <clears throat> No, I think they were very humble and private about things going on. But I think in retrospect, the fact that he hasn't returned to coaching, I think those uh, GoFundMe funds probably spent in a rather legitimate way in a way that, okay, people were, and people were attacking, why do they need money, right? 
and we, we don't know what, you know, they could be, you could be supporting grandparents and whatnot. And, you know, weren't planning to have a dual income family become a single income family. You don't know what their yeah. financial situation is. Yeah. Exactly. <clears throat> And I think even with Mary Lou, but I think in this case, people were really starting to ask questions. Although I have to say, after seeing the clip of Mary Lou that she's going to be on the Today Show and talking, I'd be like, I imagine that she has some significant medical bills. She had, you know, an oxygen uh, tube under her nose and whatnot. But I will say, I wouldn't want Christine on my tail mm. if I were an athlete competing. Mm. Well, and the thing that's always a bummer to me about that is what the the cut that the website itself will often take. I mean, that mm. was sort of one of the big things about GoFundMe is that number you see isn't necessarily the number being handed to them. Yeah. And, yeah. and they had said, like, the Mary Lou fundraiser had raised over $450,000. Yes. I don't know then what percent, because they were using a website I was less familiar with. Yeah, and... And honestly, in both cases, I understand the need for privacy. But yeah, I, you've chosen in this moment. I think that the having some transparency would allow certain things to die down, right? More, or allow people to have more compassion and empathy. Yeah, because there was that weird line where they're like, oh yeah, there's a lot of extra, so we'll just give it to some charity. And it was like, what? Is that is that what people were signing up for to do? I don't know. That's tricky. It, it, yes. I just, it, yes, right? Yeah. Um, it's just such an uncomfortable thing. I mean, again, and, and Mary Lou's daughters are answering this rather than Mary Lou. I mean, who knows if she's going to work again? Who knows, right? With, with a lot of, you know, they mentioned her speaking fee, but... Who knows if she's ever going to speak again? I mean, her voice wasn't the same. You know, she, Mary Lou's known for being like Miss Energy, right? Yeah. I can't imagine her doing that in Paris this summer based on how we saw her in the clip for the Today Show. So I don't know. It does make you think twice about gymnastics. 30 surgeries. They said four hip replacements. Like, wow. And that was, that was with... The technical content from 1984. Yes. I mean, I can't even imagine the stress everyone is under now. Yeah. I mean, they have better equipment now than they did then, but yeah, who knows, right? Yeah. N that's awful. So, you know, it's just, it's just a really dire situation, but yeah, I don't know. That was, a, that was some article and um, this, this case for Canadian nationals, I do feel for Laurence immensely. I feel obviously uh for the alleged victim uh and really everyone... and for all the other athletes having to compete amidst that circus mm -hmm. yeah i will say i saw one thing on the international academy of montreal charter of values again which i never would have read had they um actually produced a statement right they said something in there along the lines of, if you see abuse, report to us first. Well, I guess we learned nothing from USA Gymnastics, right? Because, um, you know, what could go wrong if you report to- Again, the connotation is you're gonna mess this up for us. We'll handle it. We're the- Yeah. I would remove that. I, I would update their bylaws, you know? Yeah. If you see abuse, report it. I mean, I would take that out. You understand? Yeah, that's just. Well, even like when I was in college, used to watch those like Law and Order SVU marathons or whatever. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and there were countless episodes where it was these institutions that had these same idea. You don't have to go to the police. Just come to us. We will take care of everything. Mm -hmm. And it does not age well, that concept. Yeah. I mean, I get triggered by organizations not doing the right thing. You know, I reported my uh, roommate in college for having a massive stash of child porn on his computer, right? We were living in an apartment. We had to find our own apartment. And um, the way that our college ran the program, because we all from this school went abroad together. And this was my roommate actually from home. I was not the one who found it, but I was in the room when it was found. Okay. So I mm -hmm. saw it. And um, I was the one who reported it when we were 20. And 
it was extremely, of course, I have a mother who's hysterical being like, don't say anything, he could kill you, you know, what, what not, right? The school, I, I told the school on the second morning of class, they took more than three weeks to call the London police and lived in uh, the flat with 20 year olds and someone who had this on their computer and pretended like we didn't say anything as it was going, which was extremely stressful and triggering. And the school was like, right? Also, the roommate got arrested. Uh, their computer was taken away. Their phone was taken away. Their uh, cell phone might have been taken. All of their electronic devices were taken away at the time, uh, along with their passport. But they were let out on bail, which, by the way, you don't even think of like, oh, what's going to happen after you report? You just think like, OK, this something happened. I want to do the right thing. I didn't literally I didn't know how to even call the London police when this happened. We were right. brand new in uh Never imagined this would happen, right? After they were let out on bail, they still went to class. We were in a class where I sat directly across from them for the next three months. Mm. And they set it up that the roommates were like, oh, well, can you kick them out? I mean, <laughs> after it all comes to light, right? And by the way, the other roommates knew all along that this had happened. Everyone knew, right? Everyone had their own personal feelings at first about what to do about it. But we were, you know, everyone was like, no, we don't feel comfortable living in this situation anymore. I mean, it was, we thought that the school would kind of handle it. And the school was like, no, one of you should kick them out. So I kicked them out in front of everyone with everyone there, right? But we still went to school together for the next three months. You want to talk about how uncomfortable and stressful? Yeah, and yeah, how could one focus? And at 20 years old, you don't know. I think my thing was like, I didn't know, this was my friend, right? I knew that the right thing was reporting it, but I don't know at 20, can someone be rehabilitated for that? Can they, you know, I didn't know. I didn't know. That's out of your area of expertise, yeah. No, but you you get guilt similar to survivor's guilt at that point in time. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I do feel for any of the skaters that are at uh, the competition in terms of what could happen to them, you know? And, and I think that that's just... And, and why did it take three weeks to call the police? Well, that's that's a great question. You know, yeah. lawyers going back and forth and whatnot. But yes, so I do feel for people in that situation. I think, oh my God. You know, like it's yeah. the anxiety can be through the roof, you know, at that point in time. So, and you know, it was a situation that did change the trajectory of my life, certainly based on, you know, things that start to happen in the wheels in motion. So yeah, everybody, at nationals will now be impacted by this. Um, well, yeah, and again, like you're saying, I don't, maybe the the journalists covering mm -hmm. the Canadian nationals won't <clears throat> be aggressive enough to be bringing it up mm -hmm. in the press conferences or interviews. I would think as an athlete going in, that would stress me out the most. Mm -hmm. What am I supposed to say if asked about this? Well, yes, because the, like, you know, everyone knows that there's two bodies that you have to worry about. There's Skid Canada, who you imagine wants you to say nothing, right? right? Which I have to tell you is the wrong way to go in this, in my opinion, in this situation, because you also have the court of public opinion, right? And do you look like an, a rape or abuse apologist if you don't say anything. And then what about your own personal feelings, right? What if you had a mother who had been abused as a child and you're really anti this? And what if you want to say something? You know, it's all sorts of issues. And you could see how there could be other situations that could come out of, you know, that culture of silence. So yeah, mm, it's, it's, ugly. it's ugly. Yeah, it's completely ugly. You know, I don't know. And then yeah it's just and then of course you think you always worry about the people who 
or watching the comments and things like that because are you less likely to come forward in your own abuse right. case or whatnot? How about in the Coughlin situation? I was just thinking of that, yeah. The real story is that there was originally one report, then it was reported, then other three came forward. And at which point he committed suicide. We never got the stories from those people, nor would they want to come forward based on the reactions of how people acted online. They all oh. went after the the people reporting. That mm -hmm. was, it was horrifying to see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even, even worse than like, I don't know, he seemed nice to me. And it was like, okay. Um, <clears throat> it were the people that immediately went to slander the, the person reporting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. You see, you know, and I think back to that. I mean, that was, I think that was a horror show. And, and there were things that were happening um, within culture that were different. That was on the heels of the Me Too movement. Right. And at that point, Christine Blasey Ford had just had her Supreme Court hearing. So right. there was a backlash against Me Too at that point in time. And I think that, and now this is in the past. And again, some of the comments were horrifying. So, yeah. And I think people don't mean, I think people tweet things and say things that they don't mean obviously to be anti-victim, but they don't know who the victim is, right? So, and then they're like, well, why does this person get to be anonymous? Well, if everybody likes a famous person and then you report something, their fans are gonna go after you. But people did know, so some people did know who the, per the person reporting was and they just went for the jugular. We got tons of private messages. People are always going to, in a situation like this, they're almost always going to know who the, it's yeah. eventually going to come out or certain people are going to find out and certain people know certain things, right? And yeah, I mean, it, it's horrible, but we live in a, a scary time with social media and, and things like that. So, and, yeah. and it's, you know, extremely overwhelming, I think, to be on the receiving end of that. I mean, when the Coughlin thing happened, we were getting thousands of DMs, comments. Oh my God. And even my personal pages were coming. Thousands out. per hour. Yeah. At that point in time. Do you remember that I took the YouTube channel down at that yeah. point? Yeah. Yeah. And the reason I did that is because there was a right wing blog that was directing it to our channel. Right. Because people were trying to spin things at that point in time. And <laughs> the Coughlin camp had quite the large, uh, the coordinated attack. Yeah. Delilah <laughs> called people murderers, Jonathan, yeah. at that point in time. Yeah. So. It was dark. Mm hmm Yeah. So, um, just... It was not my favorite time to be with you. <laughs> you know, it wasn't my favorite time either, you know, I have to say, it wasn't... Uh... <laughs> We've had ups and downs, but that was a particularly low, low. Because again, it's it's. Sick. I don't regret anything that I did at that time, but no. it's my favorite time. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. uh, no, I don't regret it either. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's just, it's just to see some of the ugliness of mankind in those moments is is really horrifying. Yeah. I was uh, very nervous. I still ended up going to nationals. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Here. Um, and I was a little irked to even go. And it was totally fine. Yeah. Um, most of that backlash had happened weeks earlier. And it primarily. There were things that happened at that nationals. There were people who called Christina murder on the, on the van for the competition. Like right. the red hat debacle and all that. Oh stuff. yes. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, that was, a, that was a time. That was a real time. And, and that was, you were even seeing some people being bullied into that red hat situation that did not want to be doing that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. which adds a whole nother complex level. That red hat was wild. That whole nationals was wild. And you would hope that these nationals wouldn't be. Right. That, that. Yeah. I, I think that that was a distraction from those nationals, I would say, at yeah. that point. Correct. But think about, do you remember that on social media, there was a there were like Google Docs that were basically tracking how certain skaters were reacting. Now, certain skaters said horrifying things, of course, at that point in time. And who and, was liking what, who was commenting where, yeah. 
but there was also a lot of grief talking in there and yeah, not a lot of there was a lot of grief a lot of anonymity and not a lot of facts that were out at that point in time so yeah that was whew. Yeah. so anyway i think it's a mess and then you wonder Okay, so what do you make of Canadian Nationals as we preview it this week? What are you thinking about, Jonathan? Like, <laughs> Besides what we know. just discussed? Um, Can you imagine, though, like... Okay, 30 years from Tanya and Nancy. And I have to say, I really feel for Nancy a lot, okay? She got attacked in a video of her crying, was out, and then everybody... And made then fun. judged. Like, everyone made fun of how she was, like responding to a physical assault. And still is, right? And it's all been clouded because they found a, a clip of her when she was stressed and upset, right? Like there are a lot of things. Nancy was done kind of dirty, right? Yeah. That's, yeah. If you think about it, the truth is they didn't have the copy of the Ukrainian anthem at the time. So it was waiting forever when you're- I thought that whole thing was so stupid. Yes, it was. They responded to that. Listen, they did her dirty, yeah. right? That would, yeah. mm, <laughs> at that point in time, right? Compared to uh, what we now see at the Olympics before in a, a medal ceremony, and it's completely swept under the rug. Although. And her comment of like, oh, why put on more makeup? Isn't she going to cry it off anyway? Yeah, notice how, what happened with, I think what happened with, Nancy's snarky comment was like, you could I say. I like that snarky. It was harm, ultimately harmless, harmless. right? Yeah. How come, how was the truce of a medal ceremony? Like that was dark, that potentially harmed the Olympics, right? Not not her fault, it. by the way, the, the, the cause of the truce of a situation, right? Right. But everybody just pretends like it didn't happen. Oh yeah. <laughs> You're like, no, we saw that. We saw that. That was in a way that, was as shocking as the Valieva case, right? Agreed. Just it, when you think you have seen everything and all the the wild, you know, tumultuous ride that we were on during that event for it to keep going after the event. And by the way, no one was ever investigated or disciplined based on that outburst. Yeah. On any side, right? But think about the damage that that potentially did to figure skating and you know we've never seen truce of an international competition again now granted there are reasons for that with uh the ban but that was dark Jonathan. Yeah. that was um yeah. a really that was a really disgusting scene. to me it was the final nail in that coffin of that camp yes yeah i mean yeah. obviously the volume thing was enormous Mm -hmm. that to me just like sealed the deal i was like i can't i just can't well the volume situation you'd be like well maybe there's you know if you think about you're the average person that doesn't know a lot of backstory you you'd think oh well maybe there's a, a misunderstanding then you see that and then you see sherbacopa and you'd be like that's a messed up uh <laughs> yeah Something is very wrong in that camp, but. Yeah, so, but I have to think, again, then you think about, you know, should Russia be allowed back or not? Think about it. Diana Davis is competing for another country this week. They were at the Olympics, right? Well, so, Terry's going to be there too. She's already at Europeans. So, right. like, what a mess. So there, yeah, a Terry who was connected to all of that, Michigas at the last- Common year. denominator, yeah. She's there at the competitions, but the skaters aren't. Right. That's an issue. Yeah. But do you know why she's able to be there? Because nobody ever investigated her, right? All that talk about the entourage didn't seem like the ISU ever went after them. They said, oh, we'll let the other bodies go after it. Right. Well, that's how she's now able to be at that competition. They would They would have had to personally you know, suspend or ban her for that kind of situation. Yes, they yeah. And why wouldn't they, Jonathan? I know. There was nothing more awkward than it was that one, I think it was during the pandemic when the ISU awards were all on the on video, or I can't remember exactly what year, and Terry wasn't there. 
Mm -hmm. Brian Orser was, and he had to just like be sitting alone on a video while they gave the award to a Terry. And he's just like trying to hold back a laugh the whole time. Yeah, and why'd they invite him? They knew who won that award. Okay. <laughs> and, and then she didn't even show. Yeah. So now he's just looking, you know, like a twit sitting there not winning. I, the whole thing was so odd. But I think it's weird. <clears throat> I mean, this is another topic altogether. But I, I do think it's weird that the ISU gives those kinds of awards. It's the governing body to be saying, this is our favorite coach. This is our favorite choreographer. This is our favorite costume. Like, I don't know that that's appropriate. You know, Probably. I know that vote on these. Listen, I think that the award show started with good intentions, right? And it's to market skating. I don't think that it has succeeded in its mission. I, you know, applaud that they want to grow the sport, but I, I don't think that that awards has quite. No, and it's cringy to watch and it's, weird who wins I, I i just don't i just don't see how that's not problematic by then i don't remember anything other than i think madison chalk gets best costume every year and a no, remember one year they get they gave it to like a holocaust costume and then there was such an uproar and they were like oh no. just did they win or were they nominated did they win maybe he was nominated and but he was nominated and then there was such public backlash that they were like oh sorry we wrote the free program, but we meant the short program, which was like a plain black shirt and pants. Like it was so obvious, like it's just the whole thing. It's like, ah. Listen, this is about to be the messiest week in skating ever. Can I tell you? I know that's what I'm, th you know, and gosh, I really do love this sport and I really support a lot of the athletes in it, but man, do they make it hard. Let's break it down. Why this week's gonna be messy. We've got Canada. <laughs> <laughs> which is normally a pretty non-dramatic nationals you've got deanna she's always dramatic yes yes public stories aside she was going to bring drama and excitement to this event no matter what you've got roman sadovsky who's losing his skates and his marbles sometimes when they're skating yep. he's also shown absolute brilliance you don't know what way that's going to go, but I'm watching that with an interest being like, how is that going to go, right? 100%. I'm looking at the Gogolev. We never know what's coming. Ted, if we have Ted providing commentary after all of that, come on, Ted. I'm thinking about Ted. I'm thinking about his comments about a Terry. I'm thinking about whatever happened at his rink. And I'm thinking, how is Ted going to spin this, right? Then you have to think that Ted's responsible for some of the IJS. And I start to look at... Oh, Ted, right? Uh, how could he stick his foot in his mouth? My motto for Canadian commentary is hashtag anyone but Rod Black. I don't know. Dee Dee Bro commentated at this, uh, and it, it was this big gymnastics meet with 16 teams at the Orleans Hotel in Vegas, right? It was so gross there. Dee Dee said something so, but they know that Dee Dee is, listen, I find Dee Dee to be unintentionally hilarious, okay? One time Dee Dee was very triggered when LSU didn't make the finals at NCAAs, right? And she goes, they asked her about what happened on Beam and she goes, and then the freshman got up there and the freshman lost her mind. The freshman lost her mind. And I'm like, which granted, I'm not that freshman. I think that's just, I mean, you know what? That freshman competed many times on beam after and um, regained her mind. But you know, okay, okay. the freshman lost her mind. She said something. The first, you just knew it was going to be messy, right? 16 teams, that's a lot of hours of dead air time to keep Dee Dee in line. She said something about, well, should they be eating popcorn if they want to go to the Olympics? And you're like, Oh, I could just imagine people being like, well, actually, unsalted popcorn can reduce diabetes and is actually a very fine thing to eat. Amazing. What about the, what about the eating disorder problem in this sport, TD? What are you uh, talking yeah. about? No, sir. You know what? We're secretly maybe glad that it happened, <laughs> like, right? Like, that was entertainment, right? Okay, okay. <laughs> If I knew Dee Dee was providing commentary, I would have watched every minute of that competition, okay? okay. That was, 
come on, someone that said the freshman got out there and the freshman lost her mind, right? Well, <laughs> yes, Jonathan, I remember. Yeah, I'd be inclined to watch. Dig. Okay, she had a terrible fall on beam. It looked like she could have gotten hurt. Her foot slipped. Mm -hmm. But you know what? The freshman lost her mind. Okay, this the freshman lost her mind. Yeah, right? there's probably other ways to have worded it. Just a thought. Yeah. If you knew Erin Marketing for the rest of her life, would you not be like, Erin, you get that there on Bay? <laughs> Try not to lose your Ask mind. Ask Erin how much she likes it being referenced. I guess that would be the question. <laughs> Come on. Something like that, you just have to embrace and yeah, laugh. If you can, yeah. If you are centered <laughs> and settled enough, you can go with that joke. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But otherwise, I, like, to me, like, in pairs, I would think this is Deanna and Maxime can run away with it. Oh, I'm I not even done about, about talking about how messy this competition is, right? Okay. In and the men? Well, okay, the men... Really, Roman is our story, right? The, I mean, Canadian men are always, you know, up and down, right? But think about it. While this is going on, we've got the Nikolai Sorensen situation. We've got potentially Ted and Caitlin Weaver providing commentary. <laughs> we've got Twitter. Um, we've got Deanna competing, our love, right? But poor Maxime Dischamps in that triple salve this season, right? We've got their throw triple loop that I'm I'm going to want to watch and see how yeah. we're doing it, right? We've got Megan Duhamel, who's going to be alive and well on Twitter, right? Who is <laughs> not afraid to make comments. You know, she's not, right? Um, why I like her. You know where she stands. And she's... Yeah, it doesn't matter. Right? But, uh, so we're watching that. I have to say, I'm freaking riveted. The numbers could be through the roof because let me tell you, I want to watch that ice dance event. I mean, yeah. what in the Tanya and Nancy is that, right? And is the <laughs> going to go? And is she going to be rubbing his leg like he's Guillaume Cizeron or, uh, or uh, you know, Lewis Gibson, right? I start to think like, is Marie France as good at bullshitting us as Val Condos? Like talking about integrity and everything and you're like oh and you're gonna let Baudre and Sorensen compete at national so okay okay Marie France let's, let's them, yeah. and I like Marie France and I have to say I think she's making a mistake right here mm. also on their website why does everyone have the most professional airbrushed photo except for Scott mother's Moyer Scott Moyer's mother and her twin sister literally everyone has like some professional I am photograph and then, except for them, you're like, come on now. Like two of these things are not like what the other. What do they do? What do they do there? Be honest. That second I am campus is bullshit. What are they getting $5 off a top for lesson? Like that they're really, you know, coaching people that are in another province, like bullshit. They are collecting judges <laughs> and they are making money. Okay. But no, we are all together at I am. We are raising ice. They lay it on thick and people do get mad at them for laying it on thick. They happen to have done a lot of very good things in ice dance. This is not one of their yeah. minor moments, right? Yeah. yeah. God love. Them. But you like know. you say, it's an opportunity to actually really come forward with a statement but i'm sure they're emotionally connected to that yeah and like what does roman's husband do if he's not making a statement when he's running uh the marketing agency i mean scaling not now is when yeah yeah right? that's if not now all right then we go to europeans we've got kevin and sylvia even in the best of times, that's a dramatic hot mess. So now, but in all seriousness, like we, we were having our discussion with Alyssa, like, do you go? Do you not go? I, Kevin wants to go. I know Kevin wants to go, but it, Sylvia what, is like, I will support you. Right. And she's a lot of times when we're in these sorts of moments, we may think we want to do something, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's the right thing to do. I hope this is a positive experience for him, whatever that means. I hope Kevin, Kevin, I'm gonna tell you something. There's no stress on you this week. A Terry's gonna be at Europeans with Diana, okay? There are gonna be people that are complaining about Diana's scores. There are gonna be people that are looking sideways at Lila Fear's scores. 
and you just let people focus on Sorensen and you just take the stress off of yourself, okay? Just no expectations. You go out there and you have fun, okay? You you get right in the faces of those judges. It would be beautiful. His programs are so beautiful this season. Yeah. Like, just just enjoy the skating if it's possible. I And I hope for him it is. If that means watered down content, I'd rather see cleanly executed watered down content. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. But again, that, yeah, I want to watch that. I want to yeah. watch Dance there. I no, want to see- It would be hard in the men's Are you going to see a Terry and the Kiss and Cry with that terrible Georgian boy? Because I want to see that too. I like her having yeah. to- I mean, I would imagine the Swiss boy will meddle, Lucas. Yes. Um, and, and if I were Kevin, that would probably be a hard thing to see. I mean, it could be a moment for Matteo Rizzo. He's yeah, but he's supposed down. to be injured and get surgery and- after this, so that could go either way. Uh, uh, I mean, I, I think it's Adams to lose, obviously. I love a mess of Europeans, don't you? I mean, this is I, and I think this this will promise to be one. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we've got all, Luna and her brother and Adam. All, they always- Oh yeah, wait, let's go over to the women here. So yes, we've got the Luna situation um, and Nina. Oh, Nina, who, oh, Nina's gonna medal. Nina, who thinks that she can beat Luna. And as Alyssa says, what did Alyssa Sisney say? That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> but if that's what has helped, if that mentality is what has helped land her on the podium at, at on the Grand Prix, more power to you. Think whatever you need to think. I, I may not agree with the sentiment, but Gubanova, we never know what's gonna happen. We've got Barbara. We've got that 80s program that makes no sense that her team is doing. I mean, I imagine they're going to win by a landslide. Do you think they're gonna, the Brits are going to try to close in on the Italians here? Of course. Yeah. They've yeah. got 22 countries at Montreal or how many? I love when they, they let us know how many flags that they have coming in before any event. Right. The good they thing just... they don't have to keep changing their coats. Oh, wait. Can we talk about the fact Poor Javi Araya seems so sweet, right? But do you realize that this whole thing was reported because the victim is a coach who was on the ISC website and saw that Javi Araya, who's trying to do a good thing, remember he made Skate Proud during uh, the pandemic. But I have to say, he wrote an article about diversity and equity in skating and he interviewed two white people. Like, what is that about? Right, right, is it, yeah. Yeah. God love him. He's so cute and so nice, you know, and Perhaps he's... simple. Yeah. Like, I just, I don't think he was thinking about that when he wrote that. Oh, man. That's not right. terrific. It's not terrific. Yeah. You know, I don't think the ISU should really be writing about diversity. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's their, um, their strength. I mean, you have to think about... Um, well, the colors, you know, that are participating in skating alone, right? The, the numbers, it's its not um, not the best of times for diversity and equity, right? I mean... Yeah, it could have been a discussion on how to help it. And again, I don't know that going to two white people was the answer. Didn't seem like it was, right? Seems like maybe that was... Um... But I love... Again, think about the messiness of this. You're like, sweet Javier Raya... You're writing an article about diversity, equity, and skating. You're interviewing, and why did they pick them? I don't, it was so random, right? Like it was. Yeah. Yikes. <laughs> this is like the messiest week in skating. Because here's the other thing that's confusing me is you know I love my Finnish teams mm -hmm. or ice stands. I think Allison Reed's gonna walk away with a medal here. Of course she is. It's in Lithuania. I know, but I, I really, it just and they've they, been setting the table. They have been setting the table. But guess what? Table. This was not going to be Marie France's week because you know what? It's the same caller as twenty twenty Europeans. This is hilarious because I like to tease Marie France about this all the time. After those Europeans, I had I made a video explaining politics and ice dance and I went through the history and I explained why teams have multiple countries and, and I and like I redid it and I got like, you know, they were she like, like she did not like that. I remember. She didn't. Yeah. She was in her feelings about the loss. Right. And she goes, I don't do politics. And I was like, I wrote back, 
you must have a good sense of humor, right? I got one of those and, and I love her, right? Like she's a diva, she's a hot tamale, right? She got much better at skating over the years. If you watch the early videos, you know, she's a hard yeah. worker, right? Yeah. Granted, I think her last two free dances were Canadian as hell in a very Piper and Paul type way, I have to say. The at last, uh, bleh, bleh, not my cup of tea. I think she does much better work for other teams. It wasn't my, it was schmaltzy, right? Um, but, uh, you know, God love her. I, that was one of my favorite things. Cause of course, you know, when they overturned the world team results for, um, for Spain, I was like, well, I guess I don't, I guess you don't do politics. I forgot, forgot, Marie France, you do not do politics, but apparently. Yeah. Did we ever talk about that? We because didn't. We were, I haven't we were, seen you in years. We were, <laughs> we were flabbergasted that Olivia and Tim were not on the team. I was flabbergasted that Olivia teamed up with Tim in the first place. I didn't I mean, think he was good maybe. enough. I don't totally okay. understand that part, but. Um, I think she should have kept making the money on Dancing on Ice. Her life would be much easier, right? Rather than right now. Can ever justify then why they went back and changed their decision? And no! no. But Marie France did admit that they had to, you know, challenge the decision there so well, well they should have i don't know if you go back and you watch that sophia val oh really they're not bad ah. and olivia wasn't selling this because she doesn't look as confident in this partnership and right. i love olivia love right. but so nothing Will against tim deek nothing oh, against tim oh, deek oh. but their styles do not match right no. like, and, and do you know what the greatest thing is Sophia Val and her imported Russian partner. Asaf. Coach by Sada Hurtado. Who, have you ever watched the kiss and cry when Sada Hurtado and Adria split? We covered up? it. We covered it. It was at that summer competition in Canada. And there, it was just like the body language alone was. Watch I Marie France's face looking at Sada. She picks sides. And I have to tell you, we love Marie France. But I also love Sada Hurtado. I don't like Julin. I don't like that she went to him. I understand that you do what you have to do when you're competing in ice dance. But she seems like a fabulous hot tamale. She was my favorite in that team. Yeah. And listen, I have always wanted to skate to that Le Di à la Cancée, whatever that is. It's it's the Michael Nyman music that uh, pa, that uh, Grushik and Platov skated to, and then they put the poem over. Oh, it's messy. It's dramatic. It was. She was so. She was so. It was fabulous, right? You look at Marie France's face. Asada Hurtado is upset at Adria, and you be like, I think she's siding with the boy right there. I, I don't. Oh. Um. And you know she sided with him a long time. He's now at that uh, that campus where everybody he's at the campus where everybody has the pristine headshots except for Alma and Carol Moyer. Okay, okay. <laughs> it's like all of Scott's relatives and Hubble and Adrian, right? Okay, okay. <laughs> Wait, are we gonna get to see Hubble at Canadian National? I miss her. Don't you? I, I miss Madison Hubble. She's committed to her coaching kiss and cry moments. I think she is the most invested coach in that school. She I is. Agree with you. Yeah. Listen, but, but I bet you, Madison Hubble, if she yelled at me to skate faster, I would be moving. Okay. I would she be could catch up with you. She could chase you and catch you. That that woman was fast on the ice. I love her. I do okay. too. I always did. I always did. She do my nails. Any any of it. You know, like I don't she's yeah. Okay. But that Sophia will be at Europeans, because right, that was the arrangement they struck, is they're sending Olivia to Worlds and they're sending Sophia to to European. So I have to be honest, I am less familiar um, with their- And it's gonna, of course, that tanks both teams because then judges like smell blood, right? Yeah, a hundred percent. And pairs, I don't know what the heck to think of in pairs. Um, You've got it, the Germans the new that are gonna do well. Uh, the Germans and the Germans. The Germans and the Germans, the Italian with the same boring program and no transition. Uh, and we got the- Why are Italian pair? Oh. The Hungarians. And the, the one that upsets me, are they going to be here? Here, wait. By the way, I heard an alleged story, theory, whatever, about the Daniel Grossel situation of it all. I remember he's from right. Bergamo. You know who else is from Bergamo? That Spanish pair skater who got um, busted for doping at the Olympics on my birthday. Yes. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. And, and um, yeah, just, just, 
and you know in spain right now they're in trouble for um they they were hiding drug tests over the years for for football players <laughs> so the spanish sports is in trouble oh yeah and the russians of course we get a million messages that russia is loving this also alexei Zheleznyakov, master of the boogie woogie who was always like the mouthpiece fighting for a terry is no longer with the school okay seems they did not save him or there was some sort of disagreement and you know what i like about it i think a terry needs a vagan of a ballet teacher how come a terry can have all the russian drugs all the russian politics all the russian and the russian beauty and art that that culture I... has. yeah you know you know who likes a good ballet training tamara moscovina okay and her team always had the beautiful lines. Even Galena made them do what she made them do ballet in the heat with no air conditioning all summer when they were in Odessa. And her, they looked fabulous, right? How mm. come a Terry has bent legs? You know who else needs the Vagana? Annette, Annette ballet for figure skaters. You got to follow her. She is intense. Okay, I have I am surrounded by intense women right now. We've got Karen Cortland, yeah, we're doing figures. We're doing Pilates. Then we've got Annette doing ballet. And I'm correcting my posture. I'm sleeping for 12, 14 hours a day because it's just like turning on the back muscles that haven't been used, right? Oh, and the body absorbs through that sleep, those changes, I find. Yeah. Oh, real does. It feels like someone is just like punching you in the middle of the night as you oh. are. Mm -hmm. Oh, so we've got that. You know who else needs them? The Korean ladies. How come not one Korean lady can stretch her leg, turn out her foot and point the toe? Okay. Because here's the thing is I was watching watching the Korean women, they have, it's not the programs. The programs aren't the worst. No. Some of the choreographic movements and ideas behind them are actually kind of clever. They have, they have the good jump technique by it's and large. The execution of those choreographic moments that don't seem to be cultivated as much. The, the material is there. The execution of said material is not. Every position is sort of hit to about like 80% and then they move on. And they almost, some of them seem to lack the right kind of tension in the arms in those movements, I find. And I really want to pick your brain. So they announced their Four Continents and Worlds teams and Junior yes. Worlds teams. And who was on them? I'm sorry, I didn't they mean- They left off Min Sil Kwan. They are sending Jia Shin and they're sending the twins because they have two twins with triple axles and she would narrowly- sorry, I don't even count. To me, that was one of the more egregious things of this. And I don't mean anything against, I'm, I, and my apologies, UJ, mm -hmm. um, with the triple axel attempt that was not great, was close enough that if they had wanted to send Mean Soul, they very clearly could have. Mm -hmm. I enjoy Mean Soul's um, material more this, this, I almost said semester, uh, this season. I just, I think they really did her dirty. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I I want justice for Min Sol Kwan. I, I absolutely believe she should be at Junior World. And you know why? Because she has the program. Do you remember that there was a smash program and it's all I wanted Ashley Wagner to do? That's it's right. all I wanted. That's right. Instead, she did Moulin Rouge for the 300th time. <laughs> she also did the Jeremy Abbott mix when I just think Ashley is a Jill Trenary showgirl. Yes, she is not a Jeremy Abbott. She is a Jill Trenary through and through. I you know it's one of my favorite personalities we've ever covered. Ashley? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. She's just an icon. Okay. I I may like her more no, than Alexa. Like I may like Ashley Wagner more than Alexa and Deanna combined. I do. That is a statement. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's but I mean because of how much you like the other two. Like that is a big Think statement. about the kind of entertainment and drama and feistiness that Ashley gave us. Remember one time she came to, she made masks a thing at nationals when she had the flu before COVID. Okay, 10 years before COVID, Ashley Wagner was masked up at nationals, okay? She also had the look in the kiss and cry when she didn't make the Olympics. She, she gave time? so much to nationals, okay? She, she had the swan arms. She had a coach fire her on Twitter. She was that the I, Philip Milne movie, you mean? Yes. Yeah, that was bonkers. I, that's when I got really turned off from him when he was like, oh, "I didn't come here for triple doubles." I was like, "Get off it!" Of course, like, get off. Hmm. Philip Mills, whose obviously biggest claim to fame is 
choreographing the routine that Deanna got a 6.0 for artistic presentation on. <laughs> yeah, and she called him on one of those old cell phones. Love it. Okay. A lot of sex. I remember that, right? <laughs> that weird moment. Um, but yeah, so so justice for for Min So Kwan, because I thought that was that was just Fusion was so lovely, right? I mean, come what on. happened to yell him? She's had a terrible season. And I that know. I'm aware of, but I didn't see even like, because they listed here about- you know, I think she's done for the season. Okay. And because she wasn't even listed as a withdrawal. So it's like she- oh, and She had the beautiful David and Sandra program. She did so well right. at Evening with Champions and then it all went there. But do you know who was great? You know who was freaking phenomenal? June Wa Cha had the watered down content that you want for Kevin. He did the triple axel as the second element. And based on the camera angle on the Korean TV feed, it didn't even look like he waited that long. He just he looked like- didn't. He didn't. And are you talking about the free skate triple axel? Yes. Yes, um, in the Batman music, which again, we've, thanks to Tanya, Batman and triple axels, they're very iconic. Um, when he landed it, it is such an iconic moment with the music. It was so like grandiose. And that was the problem is you- I want more face from him. I want Ashley Wagner to work with June Marcha and he, so he can bring out more drama. You know where her makeup was flaking? He needs that during the Nirvana cover. The Nirvana cover comes up, da, 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 right? I'll, it's it's added to my skating mix, okay? He just, to me, I lost the face when he seemed like he was starting to get a little tired. But that man is an artist through and through. I love the short program. I love this concept for the free He's skate. the only one that does a gorgeous unicamel. Sense her, okay? Yeah. Everyone has done an ugly version with a bent leg and a flex foot. He's pointing the toe. There and is you know, so much energy and emotion in every position, in every pose. And I don't know. I just love his material. I love his skating. And I was very appreciative that they went for clean and watered down instead of trying to throw in the kitchen sink and, and have it backfire. Did you know who'd be very upset about all these bent free legs going on at Korean Nationals? John Curry, who is the topic of our book club selection for this month, and we are going to be discussing alone uh, about John Curry on the 22nd of January, Jonathan. And you can- I, Because he's sticking out of your head. There are two ways that you can join, either on YouTube or on Facebook. I'll have the links in the description box so that you can join us for this discussion. And we're going to do Nureyev. We're going to read about Tyler Cranston. We're going to do all the visionaries, Jonathan. And we're going to- Go into all those greats. Yes. Yeah. And we're going to apply them to our daily lives, no matter what it is we do. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Amazing. Do think about the long neck. Think about the posture this week as we're doing- Yes. We have the strawberry fields. What was what, the taller Cranston? Strawberry special? ice. Strawberry ice. That's the one. <laughs> I think I think they didn't do drug testing during the the making of, of strawberry ice. But maybe they should have. That was that's an interesting thing. <laughs> Sarah Hara was a strawberry queen. <laughs> okay, uh, that's... That's just saying, I'm just saying. Yeah, as she rose up. Remember, we watched that. It was like I didn't even know where I was in in the world at that moment. I was like, what is happening here? It, it uh, felt like this week of figure skating coming up, right? Where, yeah, where... and again, you wished a taller Cranston or a John Curry were still around to work with some of these Korean ladies in particular, because again, I feel they have the potential. I think they just need to be encouraged to follow through with it more. Right. What are you predicting? Do you predict that they're actually going to compete at Canadian Nationals? Yeah. Is Canada... Why? Because Canada's afraid of losing a top team? I think... I mean, they, they only have like five good skaters right now. Do you think they're I think afraid? they're anticipating. I, I anticipate they will play the, it's under investigation. It has not been decided. And would they like that investigation to go on longer than Delilah's so that he can go to the Olympics? I wonder. I wonder. I mean, it's going to catch up with them at some point. Will the international, by the way, that name, the International Academy of Montreal, I am. And then you go on their website and it's like, I am Marie France. I am Patrice. That is pretentious as all well, see, To me, it's like a marketing 101 in a community college course. It's a little nauseating, the name of I am. But I think we've all secretly thought that for a long time. But you know what? They're Canadian, they're Quebecois, they think they're better. But than again, her. that what they have stood for and represented from the outside has been so beautiful for ice dance. I know, but now push comes to shove. Now they're not just about beautiful ice dance and winning. 
Yeah, it's just sort of, again, it would be devastating to Laurence, but now is the time you really could make a, a statement or, and, and take a stand. But I, I suppose the argument being until a decision it comes down the pike. They should announce Papadakis and Cicerons come back this week to distract from the messiness, right? Or maybe the week after so that we all forget, right? This yeah. is because again, if it came out now, I think it would still be in the footnote that mm. this is the same camp that. Mm. Um, maybe it would do more harm to Papadakis and Cicero now. I don't know. I also riddle you this, now that we've seen Korean nationals, how many competitions are we going to see them in before four <laughs> At least five or six. Okay. <laughs> oh, the poor things. Uh, young you. She didn't do too bad here, especially in that short program. All yes, things we together. finally just we finally got rid of the Tammy Gamble triple axel and quad cell, and she did quite well. Think about yeah. how many repetitions she did of those under rotated jumps that were on the flat patterns going in. Yeah, yeah, especially the short program. It was nice to see her have a moment. I mean, obviously, second after the short, seventh, you know, and then seventh overall. Um, but it was just nice to see her have an enjoyable skating moment because we had not been seeing that from her this season. No, so. she, she looked good. Yeah. She did a nice double axle triple toe. People were very excited. Ilya Mullen, and they had this show in Bologna, and he did a great oh. quad axle. And I don't know, there was a car on the ice, which is always I strange. saw that. It was in like an SUV on the ice. And I was like, what is happening? I don't know anything to get the, the people in the seats. I don't know. I don't yeah, know what else. Because I, it was interesting just before we signed on for this, there was another like side by side comparison. I like when um, they do like the ones with Yuma and his dads. Both yes. Of and you see the similarities. And they were doing Ilya and his mom, who again had the best triple lots like ever. Um, they were showing their like similar techniques on it. It was very interesting. Mom who makes them too nervous at competitions. Yes. Gotta wish that away with the genie bottle in her ladder <laughs> next time. <laughs> I always forget why he took her last name instead of the father's. I forget. I don't know. That's well. Oh, see, I didn't realize that because remember, didn't the it's easier to spell? Let's be honest, people. Do you know? Do you know how many times when I tell someone how to spell my last name that I'll be like, "It's Elise," like on a car, huh? It's Elise, like on a car. Is it huh? because they're hearing Elise? I think so. Yeah. I think I talk too fast. And then, well, oh, and then because I don't think I'm oversharing, your middle initial is P, as yeah. is mine. But so then I was confused when we used to do this on Skype because I always thought I was like signing on with Dave, please. You were. You were. I don't know you know? Why it's like that. And then I was like, oh my God, it's You know, my dad's name is Peter. Do you know how many people would say, do you know that your name spells please? You'd be like, yes. Yeah, I got it. Thanks. Yeah. Well, mine is Paul, so now we need a Mary. <laughs> so we could do Puff the Magic Dragon. Yeah, okay. I, oh, yeah, we got two. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. What was your moment of the week, Dave? When I saw that Christine Brennan actually went for the kill and... And that she call, and that they called up insurance brokers to see how much it would Mary cost Lou to insure Mary Lou Brennan. I was like, Christine, just going for the. Job. I've always thought about you was correct. <laughs> you know, like I just <laughs> <laughs> amazing. amazing. I'm gonna I go with John John in... John Triple Axel in the Batman. It was such oh, a yes. big moment. Yes, but when Christine wrote, I gasped. I gasped when she wrote that. There are just certain things. <laughs> I was like, that is that is artistry. That is a, when you call the insurance broker. I mean, they had the exact number. Yeah, she has the receipts. Yeah, unlike Mary Lou. Mary Lou should have given Christine an interview. She might have gone softer. Yeah, I think. Um, yeah, that's a woman I'd want on my side. That and oh, and Dee Dee Bro said, "Are you drilling, skilling?" She said to a coach. I was like, "What does that even mean, drilling, skilling?" Yeah. I was like, "Yes." If Dee Dee Bro is providing commentary, God okay. bless. Okay? okay. And then you know who else was? Jordan Childs was there. And remember, she's the, the uh, gymnast who her mother was in jail at the last Olympics for embezzling fun. Yes. Okay. Yeah. It's a great world. It is a great sport. I'm telling you, this week is going to be so messy, Jonathan. Okay. <laughs>
As if it weren't already going to be messy enough trying to figure out how to watch all the damn things. How are you planning on watching Europeans? Um, the way I watch everything, I go to the Opera browser, right. 7 p.m. Because this will be an ISU, like... Um, yeah, you... Go to the skating ISU. I mean, of course, you can also... Obviously, watch... for the Nationals, it's been not ISU. So, uh, um, okay. Opera browser to the rescue. We just and have to Canada? give so many things to, like... To watch this week, I mean, it's going to be great. I mean, yeah. it's, it's going to be a fascinating week. Okay, how many tweets are you going to see asking why Terry is there? How many are you anticipating? Oh. How many skating fans that watch the big events but maybe you know check out during the Grand Prix? How many people are going to wake up and be like, "Wait, Terry's there"? Wake up. Okay. Uh, who is she coaching? Who's Diana? No, we need to frequently ask questions. It just needs to be a PDF. Yeah, amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Who are you talking about when you refer to the Canadians? Well, now you know. Jonathan, we got to talk about your taste in skating, man. I mean, come on. I mean, that's... I know, it's been, sadly, a thing. Damn it. Can't even make a joke, because it's not, there's nothing funny about it. Um, oh, man. Well, we'll be back next week to break it all down. It is... But my my Matteo Guarize, he's still fine. He's still on the up and up. So love his good. modeling photos. Yes, yeah, oh, if not this game, <laughs> maybe not the one piece costumes. They it just looks oh, kind of like maybe seven... not the one piece costumes. <laughs> just different colors. Different colors. Yeah. Hold it. It should look sexy, everyone. Bye.